Okay, we are here with Mike Wardian, one of my favorite characters in the world of ultra running. We uh, we met way back when, I think at the Vermont City Marathon, the very first time back in 2014 when I was a young newbie to the marathon and he was uh, already a three-time Olympic trials qualifier. Um, but Mike has just been absolutely crushing it as an athlete for a long time. Got kind of a later start into the sport, which I think is really fascinating. He was a D1 lacrosse player in college. Um, but since then, it's just excelled at everything from short road races all the way to multi-day ultras. Uh, like I said before, he was in the 2004, 8, and 12 Olympic marathon trials. Um, and he's also been a great coach um, for us here at Chosky over the last couple of years. Um, and we kind of connected through that first with the, the first Chosky Challenge race, which he was a part of uh, running on his treadmill. Um, and this year, uh, we've seen a little bit more sparing of a race calendar. I think Mike is someone who's famous for running like every weekend, sometimes multiple races in a weekend. Um, but we're, I think we're seeing that because he's been prepping for his big project, which he's dubbed Running Home. Um, so I guess, Mike, why don't you start a little bit by just telling us uh, where you are and, and telling us what Running Home is all about? Yeah, uh, thanks for having me on. And um, I'm excited to share the project with everyone. So I'm going to um, start running across the United States on May 1st um, from San Francisco. So that's where I am right now. I just got here uh, yesterday. So this is our first kind of full day in San Francisco. And uh, the project is to run around 3,200 miles in 64, 65 days. So start May 1st, try to finish on July 4th, America's birthday, nice. but also like it'd be awesome to finish with like fireworks. Um, <laughs> and I'm going to run from San Francisco, uh, through Washington, DC and end up in Rehoboth beach, Dewey beach in Delaware. So from the Pacific ocean to the Atlantic ocean, um, trying to run an average of 50 miles a day, um, no planned rest days. And then the entire thing is to raise money for clean water projects in Africa for a group called World Vision. So, um, so yeah, so the, the premise is to try to raise around $100,000. Um, and then for me, it's also an exploration of uh, running longer than I've ever run in the past. So the longest I've ever run is about 10 days, a thousand kilometers uh, straight. Um, when I set the FKT across the Israeli National Trail in 2019. So I was hoping to use that as a springboard for this and then COVID happened and um, yeah. And then now it's 2022. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I, I wanna ask you what your motivation is, like why you wanted to do this. I know this obviously has been in, in your mind for a while, like at least since 2019 and probably for a lot longer before that. Um, and I, I guess I'd love to hear you talk a little bit about if your motivation has changed at all in that time. I know, like, you know, if you've been dreaming about this for 10 years, I'm guessing maybe at some point you had slightly different motivations. So, like, where's your motivation today? And what was the, the kind of first thing that, like, got a little bug up in your butt about, I want to do this? Yeah, I mean, I think the first thing is when I saw Forrest Gump, like way back uh, a long time ago, and I was like, oh, man, that'd be so cool to do that someday. <laughs> and then I, I just, I, I didn't actually, I don't even think I was a uh, runner then. I was just a lacrosse player, but I was like, wow, that just kind of um, sparked the curiosity. And then once I, when I did start running and started doing ultras, I was like, wow, that's, that's something that you know, it's so far beyond anything that I could comprehend, like 50 miles was so far and then a hundred K. And then, you know, when you start doing like hundred milers, I was like, Oh, those are just kind of dumb. Like, why does people, why do people do those? Like, you don't, you don't even really run the whole time. Uh, but then a couple of years ago, like I, uh, started falling in love with the longer distances and, and then it became more of like, wow, maybe I could do this. And then I started seeing, uh, people like, uh, one of the other, coaches uh, Pete Kostelnik like he set the record for running across the country and broke a record from the 80s from a guy named Frank and um and then I started learning all about the ultra pedestrians way back in the day that used to like walk across the country and there were these like $50,000 prize purses for people yeah. like walking from like New York to 
to Washington DC. And then they used to have these like crazy races at like Madison square garden that would last like a week and people would like gamble on the people. And I was like, Oh man, that sounds amazing. Like someday maybe I can do, you know, something like that. And that kind of got me interested. And I did like the Pearson grant indoor marathon and broke a record from like the thirties and ran like two twenty seven on like, just a, like a, basically a middle school track. And it's been cool to see, like, it's been cool to see that. I think you've actually done the indoor marathon before too, like, uh, on yep. the track, right at the armory yep. or no. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so yeah, like, it's been cool to see like my record go from two twenty seven, and now it's like legit, like two fifteen or something. Like yeah, it's think, really I think fast. CJ Albertson has it. Who's yeah, like exactly. now a two ten guy. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So it's been cool to see like how that's progressed. And then, um, and then that got me interested in some of these other things. And it was just a matter of, uh, I'm, I work full time and I have like a family. And so like, it was like, how do I extricate myself from my life and be able to come back and still have that same life. And, um, I wasn't able to figure that out until now. And I think I have a good handle on how to make that work. Yeah. So that, that leads perfectly into this first section, which is kind of about all the prep involved in this. So like, logistically, this is so much more complicated than a marathon or even like a hundred mile race, which I think of as logistically complicated where you've got crew, this is, you know, two months of time. Um, how long yeah. have you been planning this? And it, it, like, what's, what have been the, the just biggest logistical hurdles to get over? Yeah. So I've been planning this since before 2019. I actually was like, in 2017, after I did seven marathons and seven days on seven continents, I was like, oh, what's my next adventure? And then I was like, oh, I'm going to try to run across the country. And then the opportunity to run across Israel came up and I was like, oh, this is a perfect test. You know, 10 days, I can see how I feel, you know, make some changes and then I'll go and run across the country. And so like I started putting things in place um, to do it uh, in 2020. Um, so I'd already you know, the first, the first thing you have to, to, to figure out is like how, you, how you're going to work it with your partner or, or, you know, I'm, I'm married at the moment. So like, you know, you have to start with the like process you say at the of moment. like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we'll see well, in two months. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Like that's, that's part of the deal. Right. So like, um, so yeah, so you, you, you start that process, like you start saying like, Hey, I really want to do this. How do you feel about that? Uh, and then I had to, you know, start figuring out like, how am I going to manage my obligations at work? And so, um, I had some, a, a person that, uh, at work that I could, you know, cover, was able to cover for me when I was gone. And, and that person you know, is no longer working there. It was actually my sister. She like quit and she's at a different, a different place now. So I was like, oh shit, you know, how am I going to, how am I going to work this? Um, and it's been lucky. I was able to, um, to find somebody that to, to come in about uh about 15 months ago and so was able to to help them get trained up and so um you know i think they're in a really good spot to to help uh our clients maintain the level of service they're used to and um so that was another thing and you know working that out with my partner in the company and making sure everybody's good there and then um and then it's really like talking to the sponsors about like you know how, how can you know, how can, how can we make this happen and um, make a, make it really compelling for everyone. And so, yeah, so there's a lot of things that are involved and, and then it's also like, you know, getting the fitness, like in 2020, I was probably the fittest I've ever been. And I thought like, oh, I'm going to go take a crack at Pete's record. So, um, and that's about 42 days and about 70 miles a day. And then, uh, I jumped into, uh, to an event called the Spartan games, which was really awesome. But, I, it was a little bit different stuff that I don't normally do, like picking up like boulders and throwing them over buildings and uh, stuff like that. And I ended up getting hurt pretty bad. So uh, I ended up having some uh, herniated discs. So I had to kind of bounce back from that and I've been building back up. So instead of going for a record, I'm just trying to get across the country and, um, you know, set a personal best. And, and then also, you know, it, it's also logistically tough to figure out like, which charity do you want to support? Can you support more than one charity without mixing the messages? And um, so there was some back and forth on that. And I've done a bunch of work with World Vision in the past. And so, um, you know, I was able to select them for this journey. And I hope uh, I can, you know, maybe select them again for another journey or, um, you know, I've done a bunch of stuff with St. Jude in the past. So I'd like to, you know, support them in the future too. 
Awesome. So walk yeah. us through the, the preparation for um, like how things are actually going to work during the attempt. Like how, how many people do you have with you? Um, will you have a, a vehicle that's kind of trailing you? Uh, like where are you going to sleep? Things like that. How, how detailed have you planned this out? Oh my gosh, man. Well, I, you, you will get this later today, but I have like a, a many page manifesto, uh, which has been awesome. My friend Phil Hargis is, has scoured the uh, interwebs. Um, so we have um, like a Google doc with like every single day with turn by turn list sheets. Um, oh. It was actually, I was able to get started with it um, from uh, Laz from the Barkley marathons. He actually had had this route. Um, so I was able to, to use his route and kind of augment it. Um, so we're gonna be running uh, across Route 50, which is pretty awesome because it's actually like 400 meters from my house in Arlington and the Route 50 goes across the entire country. Um, oh. And then, so it's really detailed in that we also have like created a Strava route. So like you can, we can use Strava to, to run each day and it's got everything marked out. Um, it's been like overlaid against like heat maps to see which of routes the best, you know, instead of going on one road, maybe going on another road. Um, as far as like crew goes, I'm going to have my dad and a guy named Eric Bells the entire time. Uh, and then we have people signing up with uh, Phil Hargis right now. I think we have 40 people that are signed up to come out at different points along the event. Oh, that's awesome. Um, yeah, it's great. And then also my dad has a friend named Henry that just uh, retired and so he's super bored and so he already is like started driving so he's going to meet us in Tahoe and stay with us through Colorado uh, and then um, go home for like a week and then come back so we'll have like a chase car for some of it uh, and then we'll have the people that are coming in and out uh, and then hopefully just random people are going to show up so when I ran across Israel the first day there was like one person the second day there was like three people the fourth day there was like 15 people and by oh, like wow. the the 10th day it was like 60 people it was amazing so like i'm hoping like it kind of builds um but yeah i mean if, if it's just me that's kind of cool too yeah um and, and then will your family be out there for any of it as well <laughs> well it's funny because my wife has said no uh but then i think like they let it slip like last night that she might come in like kansas or somewhere so like around halfway or so um nice. so i don't know you to pick I, me up like, in kansas right, that could be good yeah yeah exactly like that being said like I, I i'm really looking forward to each and every like state and, and learning about the different uh, parts of the country in a kind of very granular way because you know it's 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 going to be a long time in each each of those places yeah um so one question that i i got from a, a couple people like when when you have like kind of these big pipe dream adventure projects whether it's your your seven marathons and seven continents and seven states or something like this um a lot of the time like just in terms of both finances and time they seem really out of reach for kind of normal people so i and this is totally only if you're comfortable but can you give us like a back of the estimate uh, uh, excuse me back of the envelope estimate of like how much this whole project costs and then like how how you're funding it right now like is it are you paying for this out of your savings do you have sponsors that are helping you out like can you tell us a little bit yeah. about that yeah for sure man yeah all these things cost money and so yeah it's it's been um it's been kind of a hodgepodge really so um i i i've seen uh, so before I did this, I also interviewed a lot of people that have done it before because I had those same questions. Uh, and mm -hmm. that's always been one of the things that I've tried to do is, is make sure that I can fund these adventures without, um, you know, without having to, to, you know, adversely impact, you know, college savings or retirement or something like that. And, and this is actually a project that, that maybe I'm not bending, not, not doing as good a job in because it's just so, <laughs> so massive. Um, so yeah, so this is a project that, you know, I'm having some help from sponsors, um, having people that have, you know, been kind enough to, you know, send a couple bucks my way to buy some gas and, and stuff like that, which is amazing. Uh, and then, yeah, some of it's just going to be coming out of my pocket. And, and I'd say like, um, just quickly without even doing anything, I ran a, a budget and it was like $75,000. So, um, wow. you know, it's, it's a, it's a very nice car or, um, 
<laughs> uh, amazing vacation or or whatever. So yeah, it's 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 and, and that's a I'd say a pretty cheap estimate. I, you know, I know people that have done it for less, and and I'd say most people that are uh, going to do it pretty quickly, you know, can spend can spend you know fifty hundred fifty two hundred thousand. I mean, it just Jeez. depends how big of a scale you are and and then it's also like how are you capturing it right like do, do you have a film right. crew that's with you like the entire time or uh i'm going kind of a more um parsimonious route where the film crew has came to my house last week and filmed and then they're going to be coming in on friday and leaving on sunday and then you know coming out in the middle and then coming to the end yeah. and so i'm going to be trying to augment what they're doing with like like you and I were talking with like drone footage and, and stuff that I'm going to be shooting myself. So, um, yeah, so it, it depends really. I mean, it's like anything you can, you can spend a, a gazillion dollars if you want, but I'm trying to do it, do it as, uh, as, as efficiently and cost effectively as possible. And, um, yeah, I'm hoping people, people are interested and will be able to help out. And, and then, I mean, the whole goal is to raise the money for charity though. So like, yeah. I'd rather, I'd rather people, if, if they're deciding what they want to do is, is to send that money to, to world vision and we're going to be able to, you know, change a bunch of people's lives. I think, yeah, I think we can do a lot of good. We're like 8% of the way there. So we only need 91%, 91% more. (laughs) Well, I'm sure that'll pick up as, as you get going and start, start building buzz around the time too. Oh my God. It's so crazy, dude. Like in the last week, it's already like, it's gone insane. Like it's, it's like every minute I get like a text, like, Hey, someone donated, you know, five bucks, 10 bucks, 2,500 bucks. So yeah, it's amazing. Awesome. Yeah. It's really cool. Yeah. 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 So it's crazy. Like those, those numbers, like just the kind of budgeting numbers in like two months of time, it honestly kind of reminds me of like people who go to climb Mount Everest. Like, I think you hear similar numbers in terms of both time and money and kind of like that level of pipe dream like amazing athletic adventure um so my, my question for you is like let's say you're uh let's say you're not a professional athlete but you want to do something like this whether it's climb mount everest or maybe hike the pct or run across the country what would you what would you give those uh people in terms of advice of trying to make one of these projects these dreams a reality i i think it's like anything like first you have to decide you know how and when you're going to do it I think you have to almost uh think of it as like starting a business like you you need like a business plan you need like you know how it's going to benefit like somebody that wants to wants to be a part of it like I mean it Hmm. it's I mean just because it's your dream doesn't mean it's somebody else's dream so you (laughs) you need to make it that it's mutually beneficial or everyone's going to be like that's really cool go ahead and do that like we'll cheer you on (laughs) but like um and so so i mean you you want to you want to make sure that it's appealing to people you want to make sure that um you're doing it for the right reasons i think um you know there's ways where you can do it for charity where they'll help you um you know cover some of the costs like i i'm i'm sure that um that's that's a way to do it that's not the way i've done it in this case but like you know, some charities, like it'll be an X of whatever you bring in that they'll, mm. they'll be able to help you with the project. And so, um, yeah, there, there's a lot of different ways to do it, but I'd say the first thing is like, decide what kind of project you're going to do and then, um, start, start, dude, you just got to ask a ton of people. It's like getting sponsored mm. the first time. I'm sure you know this, but yeah. I would say, and you probably, <laughs> probably got rejected as many times as I did, but I asked literally everybody and it will be like the least possible person. That's like, Oh my God, that sounds awesome. Yeah. I'm happy to help you. It's like the the dry cleaner you go to, you know, ask the, you know, the place where you, you know, like to, and, and it's like, I'd say, start, start small, start with like your local coffee shop that you go to all the time or your local running store that you patronize uh, and build from there because they might have a relationship with a goo, for instance, or they might have, you know, somebody that, um, is in their marketing team that's looking for a cool story. Um, and then, and then do a good job. Like, I'm, I, I feel like, uh, you have to, you have to, you know, really honor your sponsors and, and, and make sure that there's a benefit to them or else, um, they'll find somebody that, that can. Totally. No, that, that's great advice. I love this starting small. It's super, super applicable. 
Well, um, and then it also it also builds on itself because if you're like the first, it's kind of like anything. Like if you see like one person standing in line for a restaurant, you're like, uh, I don't know. But if like there's 10 people, you're like, uh, oh. so like if 10 people are sponsoring you, then they might be like, oh, okay, well, if I sponsor that person, well, then like there are 10 smaller sponsors might help me get even more reach. That's why like you right. see sometimes like a company will want to sponsor somebody that's like a coach for team and training because like they sponsor one person, but they actually get access to like a hundred people. Right. Right. So, yeah. 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 No, that's, that's great advice. Um, I want to switch gears and talk a little bit about training. Cause obviously that's something that, that we talk about a lot here at Chowski. Um, so, yep. I mean, your, your running is always fascinating to me because even now it's like, you know, you ran cherry blossom 10 mile or a couple weeks ago, you ran the parkway 10 mile, like you're still doing these like relatively short races. And then, you know, obviously you've made Olympic trials uh, and you've done multi-day stuff like the Israel run and um, the one you just did in, uh, in Sri Lanka and stuff. So I'm curious, I'm really curious, like what have you been doing to train for this event? Um, and how, how is it different in terms of prepping for something that's you know, even a multi-day thing like like the Sri Lanka race or the Israel run versus this that's going to take, you know, 60 or 70 days maybe. Yeah, I'd say actually it's weird because um, so I've been doing a ton of strength training and I've been doing a lot of mobility and flexibility stuff um, and just trying to stay healthy. So I've actually been running less miles than I normally would have uh, by this point mm -hmm. in the year. And it's because I want to be super fresh and excited to run. I don't want to be stale at all. Uh, and I've also been trying to put on some like mass uh, on my upper body and just more strength. Um, so that when I start to get to like day 30 and I can't keep any calories on like that, I actually have something left for my body to burn. So mm -hmm. I think I'm like three or four pounds heavier than I normally am. Uh, and I, I'm definitely much more like upper body heavy. Um, so I, I, I wanted to be that way going into this just so I have, yeah, like when I ran across Israel, like I just shed weight really, really quickly. And it was really like, I got so tired of eating, like my mouth hurt just because I was trying to like, and it, you can't drink anything like that's, you can't drink water, which is what I normally always just drink because you just need calories. So you always have to yeah. drink something with calories. And, um, so I've just been preparing like mentally and physically to, to just get my butt kicked for 65, 70 days. Um, so I just want to be super fresh. So like, literally, like I've been running way less than I normally would run and way, way slower. Um, so like you were saying, like I did parkway and I did cherry blossom 10 miler, which are both fast races and they always have really good competition. And I was like four or five minutes slower than I normally am. And literally like at cherry blossom or at uh, parkway on Sunday, I was like, I'm just not getting hurt. Like, I'm just not getting hurt. Like, I don't care. I got passed by like three guys in the last mile. And I was just like, whatever, I don't care. Like, and that's just not the way I normally run. But, um, you know, that's, that's, that was not the goal. And, you know, that's, that's fine. It was, it was just, a, it was fun to be out there and see everyone. Um, but so I, I feel like I've, I've been very, very cautious, like, in, in the extreme sense. And, and so my training has been pretty minimal, but also like I've been doing like lots of stuff like to get strong for it. So like lots of step ups with like weight vests, lots of, uh, dumbbell, uh, push ups, burpees, squats, like all that kind of stuff. So that, um, that I'm ready to be out there 10 to 14 hours a day. And, and a lot of that's like, I don't have to go fast. So I've been training it going right. slow too. So like getting used to running 12, 13, 14 minute miles, which like wanted to make me stab my eyes out the first time <laughs> I started doing that. Yeah. So that, that actually leads well into another question I have, which is when you think about a day of running for 12 to 14 hours, do you schedule that where you have, I'm going to run for X amount of time or X number of miles, and then I'm going to stop and take a break or you just kind of run continuously or to a landmark. Like how, how have you kind of broken that up? Yeah, it's, it's interesting. So right now I've been, uh, I've talked to a bunch of people and I've been trying to figure that out for myself. And I think it's going to be something that's fluid at first. Um, and I'd say like, we're going to try to stop every five to like every eight to 10 kilometers. So like every five to six and a half miles. 
Um, at first I was thinking maybe 10 miles, but I think, I think it'll be nice because we have the car and, and we have the ability to crew, like just to be able to sit down. And then the other thing is I really want to make sure I take care, good care of my feet. So I want to make sure I air my feet out as much as possible. I don't want to have blisters, um, like in a single day thing, like blisters are annoying in a multi-day thing. Blisters are the difference between finishing and not finishing. And so like just making sure that I have good, um, good, good support and, and that I'm smart. Um, and then I just want to go slow. Like I, I, and that's really hard for people like us that like to run fast. Mm -hmm. Like it doesn't feel like you're running sometimes. And like, yeah. I think, you know, this from being at altitude, like you're like, Oh, I want to run really fast. And like, just walking is hard. But like when you're going for this long, like it's going to be hard no matter, you know, no matter. Yeah. It, this, this, yeah. I just want to be able to, to, to be able to keep going day after day. And so that's going to just be a mindset shift. And, and so like the, the support, I think will be, that's something. That, and then the other thing too, is like what the road will give us, right? Like if there's like, you know, 10 K and it's the middle of the golden gate bridge, well, we're not going to stop. There, right. <laughs> so like, um, yeah, so like thought. it's also dictated by the route. Um, so like, you know, sometimes they'll be able to see me more and other times not. And I think it actually is weird, but I think the aid in cities is going to be harder than it is when we're out on the open roads. So yeah, um, that kind of makes sense. Yeah. Just because of like one way streets and like, you know, we're, we have the big, uh, you know, big R 25 foot RV. Right. So like, just like yeah. driving that around the city is <laughs> just going to suck. So yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, and Tell us about your fueling strategy, because I know for, I mean, you were just talking about in Israel, it was like literally hard to eat enough. And two months is a very long time to just like live off of gels and sports drinks. And I know you're <laughs> someone who, I mean, you're, you're, you've got mostly vegan diet. So you're like out there with like avocado wraps and stuff. But tell us like, do you have a plan for that? Do you just have like a whole bunch of options? And you're kind of going to go with your gut of like whatever feels good. Yeah. So yeah, you're right. Um, it does become difficult and really it becomes like, at least every time I've done one of these things in the past is like, you just want something that's got a substantial amount of calories, uh, and that's easy to eat, like, because chewing just becomes like annoying. So like, yeah. uh, I'm envisioning, yeah. Um, avocado hummus. Um, I do eat eggs. So eggs, uh, honey, uh, lots of nut butters. Like I have a sponsor, big spoon roasters that I'm going to have a bunch of, um, uh, nut butters, but then also like ramen and stuff like that, that you can just add water to. And that's like really calorie dense and kind of thick, um, pasta, rice, um, veggies, like, uh, burritos, <laughs> like, yeah, I'm, I'm going to be eating just as much as I possibly can. And then like today we were walking all over San Francisco. I think we walked like eight or nine miles and uh, like my crew was with me and they're like, Hey, you should just, you know, eat this, you know, lunch sitting down. I was like, no, dude, I got to get used to like eating on the go. So like, I was like eating everything <laughs> as we were walking and like, yeah, just, just getting your body used to that kind of stuff. And then um, yeah, just being ready to, to have stuff that like you love that you, turns into stuff that you hate. Um, so, um, <laughs> I think you've probably had that in races and, and the longer you do these things, you're like, I don't want to ever see another, um, you know, whatever it is, you know, your favorite oatmeal cookie. You're like, I hate that now. Or, um, so like having a lot of options, having like calorie dense stuff. Um, I I've been, lucky I, I partner with a group called um, South Block and they're going to be sending like like these um acai bowl kits to me which will be nice wow. and um I'm, I'm hoping people bring like homemade you know food and pizza and actually my buddy <laughs> I, I'll send it to you but my buddy Phil is like created like hey Mike likes this he doesn't like chocolate because you know like people <laughs> like make homemade chocolate chip cookies and like betrayal angels and I'll be like oh great no I don't really like those. So, um, you know, it's <laughs> no, just exactly, trying to have man. like, I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's so weird. Yeah. I don't. Um, and I don't drink coffee. Like I have all these like weird things, like, but, <laughs> um, but yeah, it'll, it'll be a lot of trial and error. And like the, the, the hard part is like, I can't just go into like every convenience store and, and find something that works for me. So like that, that mm -hmm. is, 
that's going to be a challenge, but you know, I'm not the first vegan person to go across the country and um, you know, we'll figure yep. it out. Yep. Um, last kind of training question. I think of you as someone who's just super tough mentally. Um, how do you approach such a long task, like such a big, big project like this from a mental perspective? Um, well, I, I feel like it's, it's exciting to me because, um, you know, it is going to be longer than everything, anything I've ever done before. It's going to be like the longest I've ever been away from my wife and kids. Um, yeah. and my wife for like, I mean, Jennifer and I've been together since I was like 1996. So like, this is, this is a huge, um, a huge thing. It's, it's sad. Uh, and then I've never been away from the kids this long ever in their entire lives. Um, I mean, luckily I travel a lot or I did before the pandemic. So like it's the kids don't really care, I don't think, but, um, and then like, I'm going to miss our dogs and, and, you know, just, I, I like almost cried when I, 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 my buddy Tom that I work out with, like we do CrossFit, like six days a week five days a week and like i was like oh my god i'm gonna miss you man it's our last workout and we're like hugging and um so like i'm gonna miss my little life um but i'm you know it's it's for a good cause and and i think it's gonna be um it's gonna be special and so like i mean when you do things like this you have to make sacrifices and, and you know that's part of it and so like mentally i'm prepared for that um i'm prepared for um you know, how hard it's going to be. Like, I, I know that, um, each day is going to be its own challenge. It's going to have its own challenges. Um, but I'm looking for it as like, I get to have like 67 little adventures, like every day is going to be its own little adventure. And like, how many people get to have like an adventure every day? Like, and it's going to be sure. like shitty stuff too. It's going to be <laughs> like, it's never, it's not going to be all like rainbows and stuff, but it's going to be like, you know, the, the RV broke down or, uh, somebody put diesel gas in it, or I don't, know, I don't know what it's going to be, but but you know it's going to be you know something, and and yeah. that's that's going to be part of it. You know that's just you know that's that's how it works. Like just leave, like I mean, just so you know, it's like like to get ready for this. Like I had to buy a new lawnmower, I had to buy a new dishwasher, I had to buy a new uh, laundry machine, like. Uh, my car got a crack in the windshield, like all the things, like so much adulting was going on. Like it's, it's just, just, yeah, it's just like how life works is like when you really want it to just be chill, like life is like, here you go. Here's a lot of stuff. Yep. Deal with it. So that's just part of it. Awesome. Okay. I've got a few questions that we got submitted from fans. Um, these will be hopefully yeah. quick. Um, one, how much do you normally sleep and how much are you planning to sleep during the attempt? Oh my gosh. So I got, I, uh, that's it. I had to buy a new aura ring that looks like costume jewelry. And I hate, I like, I hate how big it is and it like hurts my hands, but like, I want to track my sleep. I'm working with like MedStar health to like do this big study also about like the project. So I'm going to wear like an e EKG patch. Like that's really oh. awesome. It'll check like my heart rate. I actually wore it for like a week uh, this last week. And then I have like five of them to wear along the thing. But like, um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I feel like I don't sleep a lot. Like the, the average sleep is like, I think last night I got like three hours sleep. Um, so, so I'm really curious to see like how that affects me. Like if I do get a good sleep and I sleep like six hours or something, like do, do I feel better during the day? So like I have like a sleep score. And so we're tracking all those metrics. So that's something like we're going to track, we're going to track like how many calories I eat each day, how far I ran, nice. how many stops I took. Yeah. So it's actually, I've been looking at like ships log, like captain log books to like, see like how they track everything and feel like we're going to do all that. So I actually that's have awesome. like, a yeah, it should be really cool. Like, um, and then I feel like it's going to be great data for like, you know, for me, like going forward, like, cause I want to have more of these projects. Like I want to run a, the Appalachian trail. I want to do the Pacific coast trail. I want to like row across the Atlantic. I want to run on the moon, like all these like crazy things. Um, but this will give me like information, like, Oh, on day 50, you know, you didn't eat enough beets or whatever. You should have had more, you know, calcium or something. So, yeah. um, 
so like it'll be it'll be cool to have all those metrics and you know hopefully uh, allow me to do even bigger crazier projects in the future that's fascinating i i can't wait to see all that that's gonna be <laughs> such such interesting data the scientist in me is like so interested in that <laughs> yeah i think it'll be cool like you know because like do does five thousand calories work or you know yeah you know or like in some days it might be fun to just be like oh, i'm not going to eat anything like solid and see how that works right. or like um yeah. you know but i i feel like i say all this now and i'm just going to be like i just need to get to the finish like whatever it takes like and i feel like that's how it's going to be most days is like i have all these dreams and like oh i'm going to fly a drone and it'll be cool and then by like day five it'll be like just i just need to go like and just yeah. you know yeah yep um what about so one thing that's become popular recently is are these different kind of recovery modalities whether it's like the norma tech boots or um you know different kinds of special diets or uh you know foam rolling icing all these things i'm curious if you use any of those regularly and uh if you'll be doing anything like that on the on the road yeah so i don't do a lot of that stuff i do like some of that stuff and i do a lot of like mobility stuff um like bird dogs, bridges, um, dead bugs, um, do some foam rolling. I brought like, um, like a gun, like the hypervice gun. gun. Yeah. 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 Um, I did not get the boots yet just because I feel like they might take up too much room in the RV, even though I feel yeah. like they could be pretty cool. Uh, but they're super loud. I don't know. I didn't get them yet. Maybe I will. Um, I feel like I'm going to probably be using ice um, very frequently, if not just to stay cool in the van, but also just to, to help with um, swelling and inflammation. Um, yeah. And then I'm going to see how it goes. Like I, I like to soak sometimes. So like if I can get in a hot spring or um, a bathtub every couple of days, if I can get in a, in a, you know, if we stop at a hotel, like, I, mm -hmm. I, I think we're still deciding, like, how much we're going to use hotels, um, you know, to do laundry and, like, get on good Wi-Fi and all that kind of stuff. But, um, yeah. yeah, so so I think that'll be, like, evolving. And I'm curious, too, like, you know, if I do do one of those things, do I feel much better the next day? And then do I just make that part of my, like, checklist? Right. right? Totally. Uh this, I like this this question. It said, "Will District Taco be shipping him burritos, or does he have to take it with them?" Oh my gosh! I wish. Yeah. No, I don't think I, they they're so fresh. Like I think that would be tough. Um, mm. But that is a good idea. Maybe I could have Jennifer freeze some and then um, send them out. That's a good idea. I there need to, I, I like need to that. get on that. Well, thank Frozen you, whoever stuff. asked that question. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. a great idea yeah yeah i yeah. can ship it with the the bowl kits dude frozen burritos is a great idea you just throw that in like a if you got a microwave in the rv like oh you're ready to go yeah yeah yeah. we do have a microwave but that's a great idea oh man yeah, yeah. good idea thank you whoever answered that go. question <laughs> um <laughs> okay uh last one to those who follow you closely we've seen you getting pretty seriously into both pickleball and chess are we going to see you picking up a pro career in either of those after this is over oh my gosh uh so uh i hope so uh chess <laughs> I, I i've plateaued about 1300 so to go pro you need to be more like 21 2200 and even then you're still like you got to like stream and stuff and so I've got a bunch of work to do um, in pickleball. I feel like I've made some faster progress, but I still have so much work to do. So uh, I definitely am going to be working on both of those um, passions after this. And hopefully I can play both during like actually the oldest uh, oh, chess nice. club in the, in the United States is in uh, San Francisco, the mechanics Institute. And so I'm going to be visiting there and I tried to find a chess game in uh, Chinatown today and I, uh, we didn't get to the right spot. So yeah, hopefully both of those, um, I was looking around for pickleball, but I haven't seen it that much here. Actually. I saw a couple of tennis courts, but no pickleball courts mm -hmm. yet. Um, so yeah, if, any, if anyone's thing. on there, no, 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 it's actually, it's all over the West coast in California and it's actually super popular in Florida and Arizona, but yeah, it's, it's nice. fastest growing sport, fastest growing sport in the U S dude. Interesting. Fascinating. Yeah. All right. 
yeah, we'll yeah. have to get Chosky into pickleball coaching next. <laughs> oh man, I, yeah, actually, I I'm gonna I am gonna be pickleball coaching. Like I met a guy who teaches pickleball, so he's gonna have That's me awesome. as one of the coaches. Yeah, yeah, nice, but dude. not until I get back. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, that's pretty much all the questions. To wrap up, um, can you just kind of let us all know again um, how people can follow both you and the attempt, and then what's the best way to donate uh, to support World Vision? Yeah, that's great. Uh, so people can follow me on social. So we have um, I'm at Mike Wardian on Twitter and Instagram. So that's M I K E W A R D like dog. I A N like Nancy. Uh, and then I'm on Facebook. We also created a Facebook group for this run. Uh, I just signed up for TikTok. I don't really know what the hell I'm doing, but uh, I'm Mike Wardian or Michael Wardian 613 or something. It's on my email. So I'll send that to you if you want to give it out to everyone. And then Sounds if good. people want to people want to donate, if they're on Instagram, there's a link right in my bio. So you can just click there. And it'll take you right to the World Vision site. So there's no like, oh, I got to send him money and then maybe he'll donate it or whatever. Um, nice. Yeah. And then, and then uh, I've got like a, I've got my uh, Facebook, my normal Facebook pages. So if people want to go there and um, there's also like a tracking um, website. So if you want to be bored at work and, or I hope you're not bored at work, but if you are bored at work and you want to watch a little dot move across the United States for the next two months, um, you can do that also. Awesome. Yeah, we'll, we'll make sure we post all those links as well. And and speaking of, of that tracker, if people do want to meet up with you somewhere on the course for a few miles, um, how, how can they do that? And is that welcome? Oh, of course. Yeah. So uh, anyone can come out whenever they want. Um, and... I'll send it to you, but we have like a spreadsheet, like a Google doc, and you can see where I am and where I'm going to be. And so if I'm close to you or you live close to route 50, uh, look for me to come through and it has like estimated days, but those are just kind of estimates. So like, I'll have people be like, where's it going to be on like May 28th? And I'm like, well, I'm supposed to be here, but I don't actually know if I will be here. I don't really know until like May 27th. <laughs> yeah, ex exactly. But like, I, I think it's awesome. Like people want to come out and like, I'm just like, Hey man, this is, I, this is the the plan. Um, and so they can follow that and then they can email my buddy, Phil Hargis. So he's like coordinating and handling all the logistics. And uh, I think right now we have 40 people signed up. Like I, I mentioned That's that maybe awesome. earlier. So, um, so yeah, people can come out for one day, you know, two days, five days. Like I have, I have, um, like my brother-in-law's coming out like my like he's not even a big runner and he's going to come out for like three days and like just come and hang out and so like it's going to awesome. be awesome like like people that you yeah that you maybe haven't seen forever like I'm hoping some of my lacrosse uh player friends come out and um yeah it'll be great so yeah people please come out if you want and um follow along and yeah if uh it strikes your fancy you can make a donation also Sounds great. Um, we'll open it up to questions real quick before we let Mike go. We got about 10 minutes. If people have questions, feel free to unmute yourself or you can put it in the chat. Um, if not, we'll uh, sign off. But yeah, feel free to shout out any questions if you've got them. If not, this has been uh, awesome. Anybody? Everyone's shy? Yeah, Brandon, no I know one. you had questions about altitude, but we can talk later. Yeah, yeah you guys can talk later. <laughs> Or you can talk now and you can teach me because I, I still get my ass kicked. Dude, this is the, there's no cheating. That's the problem with altitude. It's like, you just gotta, you just gotta put in the time. Like you just gotta go up and wait for it. Like, I mean, so actually yeah. the secret is you either give yourself like 10 days or you just go immediately. Like that's the real trick is like, if you're going to go run hard rock or Leadville or something like a high altitude race in the U S the best thing to do is to either give yourself 10 days or like go up the night before and just yeah. like a lot of the time there's like this weird physiological effect. And I, I don't know the exact scientific explanation, but you kind of get like a little free pass for like 24 hours where I think it's basically like the perceived effort, like isn't adjusted well. So it's just like your heart is working way harder. So like, if you look retrospectively, your heart rate will be way higher, but it doesn't actually feel that hard. And you're kind of like able to push yourself harder than you normally would be able to. 
Um, yeah. It's like the same thing when like soccer teams come here to Quito to play, they'll fly up like 30 minutes before the game and <laughs> play the game and then go back down because otherwise, yeah, if, if you come up like three days before, then it's just not worth it. So that that's my I, spark notes version of how to cheat at altitude. <laughs> I completely agree. Like I've done it like every which way and it sucks no matter which way you do it. But if you go 10 <laughs> days, if you go 10 days early, it's way, way better. Uh, yep. But like every time I go like four days, it's trash. Like Doesn't I feel like, much. yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. no, I feel like death. Like you just feel yep. like you don't sleep well, you're dehydrated, yep. your head hurts. And right. then you, you feel like you're going to vomit every time you take a sip out of your bottle because like you get lightheaded, it sucks. And so, yeah, yeah. like if you can get there early, it's way better. But like, I've yep. tried to do the thing, like just coming up the day before and that kind of sucks too. So. Yeah. Yeah. There's no, there's no real easy way to do it, but that, that, those would be my recommendation is avoid that uh, kind of middle gray area, either just go up and send it and avoid the kind of symptoms for a couple of days or give yourself 10 or 12 days up. Yeah. yeah. I, I feel like I've got it down to like, if I can go, this is actually a weird trick that I don't know if people have done. Like I go like seven days before and then do a really hard effort. Like the second day you're there. So like I've done like races the week before hard rock. And that's mm. actually when I've, I've always had my best race and try to go higher than you're going to go. So like yeah, if you're doing, one. yep. So if you're going to do like Rainier and you got to get up to like 15 or whatever, if you can go to 17 or 18, it'll feel much better when you go to 15. So yeah, uh, yeah, that's, that's worked for me before. Yeah, totally. All, All right. right. Well, if no one's got anything, yeah. I'll, I'll go back we'll to you go, man. trying to find, yeah. I'm sure you've got a lot to do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Load those calories, dude. Keep the legs fresh. Um, this is going to be so Thanks. exciting. I'm so stoked to follow this and yeah, we'll have, we'll have lots more posts on, on our Chasky network and uh, link to everything that you're doing and, and make sure we get all that info out to people. All right. Thanks guys. All right. Thanks everybody. Have a good night. Thanks Mike. All right. Yep. You're welcome. Ciao. Bye.